Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Making It Fun. I am your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I'm super excited you're joining me here today. Now, if you're new to the show, welcome. I'm super stoked you're here. If you have been watching and following along, AKA seeing me stumble in my production quality and all of that kind of stuff, well, I'm just gonna point out, I'm playing still with my formatting. So if you've been watching in the past, they were live videos and they looked a lot like this and they were a lot of fun and we're gonna do some show and tell, we're gonna do some make and take, we're gonna do some prize giveaways and all of that kind of stuff. Hopefully we'll over the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna to try to kind of tighten down the show a little bit. However, I'm not doing it live. It just makes it so much easier for me to be able to manage my travel schedule, manage the technology of the cameras, all of that kind of stuff. I've been playing back and forth with whether or not we're gonna be on Facebook or whether we're gonna be on YouTube. And right now it's all on YouTube. It just makes all the prizes so much easier to do. It makes all of our communication so much easier to do. We will let you know on Facebook and Instagram and all the social media out there whenever we're doing something fun. We're gonna remind you right now, please subscribe to Making It Fun with Rob Appel. Hit the little button to be notified because I do still want to do live videos, especially when I'm out on the road like I was last week. But last week I was up in the high desert of Sisters, Oregon, Central Oregon, and the cell phone signals were terrible so a live video would have been awful but if you are following along and I certainly hope you are you'll notice that on Wednesday and Wednesdays are our posting days we will put out something every single Wednesday that we possibly can for you on Wednesday I put out the Quilters Affair uh, adventure I did I'm calling the travel videos story time and videos like this we're just simply calling making it fun we're putting in a numbering system so you can follow along easier and because they are recorded, you can watch them. I got a wonderful notification just today saying, Rob, please make wonderful 20 to 30 minute long videos so that I can watch them on my lunch break. So here you go. Here's a 20 to 30 minute long video for you to watch on your lunch break. And I mentioned that I was in Sisters last week because one, I love to go to Sisters. It's a beautiful outdoor quilt show. It does happen on the second Saturday of July every year and the quilts go up in the morning and come down in the afternoon so it's always scheduled that way. But the video I put up was all about Quilters Affair and Quilters Affair is the Monday through Friday of daytime classes with about 35 different educators from the likes of Sarah Filkey and Tula Pink were there teaching like crazy. Uh, Robin Ruth Designs is there. She does fantastic stuff. Lynn Coolidge is there dying. Ann Shaw, a new friend of mine that you saw, does fantastic radical uh, animals, uh, fractured animals. I mean, just all kinds of great stuff. Myself, Scott Hansen. You can take classes from everybody. Violet Craft was there, Jen Carlton Bailey. It was a blast. And in the evenings, we do all kinds of special activities to keep all of you quilters entertained. We do a lot of fundraising. It's an outdoor show, it's free. Uh, we can't charge the folks to come to the show, so we need to make sure that all of the things that happen all year long to keep the show alive are funded. So I'm often doing bingo nights and things, blah, blah, blah. I've only got 30 minutes, I can't waste time doing this. But at any rate, so that's what that video was all about. The point I'm trying to make, the first thing that I got really excited about in Sisters uh, outside of the actual class time was the Wendy's Wish Foundation. And the Wendy's Wish Foundation is um, a foundation, and I always get some of this wrong, so please don't quote me, but it's a foundation based on cancer awareness, fundraising for cancer, fighting cancer within children. And so what we do every year as a group of artists and educators is we put together really fun, postcards that are then framed by the High Desert Frameworks, Myrna Dow, and she just does an incredible job and the frames are beautiful. And these postcards will generally sell from about 100 up to $500 as a silent auction throughout the week. And so it's really, really cool to see what you can do even in the small mini format. But postcard quilting, and that's today's make and take. This is the lesson we're gonna do. We're gonna dive into postcard quilting here in a few minutes. It's so fun and easy because you can do so much in such a small space. And for me as an artist, one of the things I find that's really fun is to give myself assignments or challenges that force me creatively to work, I'm gonna say, outside of a box and maybe within a different box. So for this, the whole thing is finding applique, because you know me and I love my fusible applique, finding applique that fits beautifully into a small four by six space. So, 
I'm gonna talk about the supplies I've used. I've got a trick that I've never tried before, and of course I'm gonna to try to do it on this kind of recorded, kind of live. Yes, there's probably a fail coming. Stay tuned, we'll see if I can pull it off. It was an idea I had right as I said action, and I started ironing this strip of fabric. Remember, turn the iron back on. So anyways, we'll see if I can put some binding around this postcard in a new way, because some of the postcards get a bit of a raw or rough edge. Something we can discuss. So backing up to the beginning of the supplies, Two super fun fabric lines today from Michael Miller. You know one of the things I love to do here at Making It Fun is talk to all of you about the fabrics that are on the road, the fabrics that are shipping right now to your local quilt shops, right? So I wanna help promote those stores that you love to visit, whether it really be local or online, I just want you to know what is currently shipping and what the shops are excited to have in stock, brand new, basically is what I'm saying. So we're gonna go backwards, starting kind of in a figure eight mode today, right? The very first one uh, that I'm going to give away at the end of the show today, and I don't wanna take it apart because I don't wanna take it apart. It'll be ugly back in the box, but I can show you is this cute little line called Hello My Dear. It's a Christmas theme line, it's super fun. It's got these great little deers in here. We've got some stripes, we've got some border prints, some metallics, super cute little one. So at the end of today's show, we'll do the mystery question and one of you will win this. So while we're talking about the formatting, one of the questions, maybe I'll even put it across the bottom of the screen or something like that. One of the questions I had when I did the last prize giveaway, which actually was about two weeks ago was, hey Rob, I live in the UK. Now I'm not reading this, so I might be getting it wrong. But hey Rob, I live in the UK, can I win your prize? Or is it only for the United States residents? Now you know I'm filming this in Morro Bay, California. I'm in my, what was a master bedroom at one point, on the other side of this wall was a television in the living room. So, I wasn't sure. I didn't ask that question to Michael Miller when I first started giving stuff away. And so last week was absolutely, everybody can win. We sat down, we had a big meeting. We took out pencils and clipboards. We put on the green visors, you know, with the accounting and all that we talked. And the bottom line was, we want to serve you. We are so excited at Michael Miller Fabrics to have these opportunities. It was a hands down unanimous decision. Of course the prizes are open for everybody between here and the moon. Now, it's an, so it's an international prize. Anybody can win the prize. However, if you are on the International Space Station and you are watching my videos and you win the prize, uh, you must fly me to the space station for delivery. Everybody else, I'll drop it in the mail. And remember, I put it in the mail to your local quilt shop. That is my one, one request. I am a fabric vendor selling to local quilt shops. It doesn't do them any good if I give you all of the fabric, so I need to give it to you in their store, please. So just when you win, have a quilt shop in mind and I will ask you to go pick up your prize at the local quilt shop. Take a picture for some social media time. We'll even put it later on on the show. Remember, talking in figure eights, this is perfect. So. Hello, my dear. We'll go home to one of you in a week or so, but we'll be picked up at your local quilt shop after we win the prize. That's the last thing we do on the show. The postcard I made right here is made from Home for the Holidays, and I had lots and lots of yardage of this. So let's point it out right now. I've got my little snow cone, right? My snowman and the cone, uh, which is just a great print, super fun. Um, and it's a tossed print, which is really important when you're building quilts. So it's a direct, it's, it's not a directional print. Hopefully you can see that there, that all of my snowmen are moving all around, doing great different things. My personal, I, had, I can't say it. I actually had two personal favorites in one line. <laughs> can't do that. But look at this. I loved these houses. They're super cute. And because we're doing applique, they're also very postcard friendly. Remember back to that four by six formatting. How can I do something clever with this in that size? So I love the houses. This is the second of my favorites. I said you can't have two favorites, but I just did. So look at these cars. Are these great? Okay. The Griswolds family vacation, Christmas vacation. I grew up on it. I've been sharing my teenagers the last few years. When I see this, I just think a good old Clark driving down the highway and that tree Clark, she's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So at any rate, uh, but also uh, within the line, the, the great coordinates, the stripe. So with the stripe is actually the background for my postcard. Let's tack this up. I forgot to show you the presence in the stripes, which is a real gift. <laughs> 
Awesome, I love the little birds on the tags and all the stuff. Super cute line, home for the holidays. Um, oh, and also I forgot to mention, we actually have four, and I know we're in July and we're doing this, four Christmas in July lines that we're doing because a lot of you like to get that head start. I have two of them in stock right here, so I'm gonna encourage you, uh, please bounce on over to www. as if you need that anymore. We're, we're so technologically advanced, we don't even say that, but go to michaelmillerfabrics.com and they have all of their collections already posted on the website. Even things that haven't quite shipping yet, so you get inspired. But these are the things that are on the road or were on the ro road last month, easy for me to say, uh, for Christmas in July. So now let's talk about more of the technique supplies that go into the postcard. We are, like I said, bouncing into our make it and take it portion of the show. So there's a few things that I almost always use when it comes to applique. First thing, actually, I always use is heat and bond feather light. Um, I tried to put this so you could see, Heat and Bond has several different styles of fusible web. If you're brand new to quilt making, fusible web is a paper with a glue, I don't know if you can see there's a sheen on this side, with a glue side. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be able to iron the paper side, I said that kind of weird. I'm gonna put the iron on the paper side, the glue will be on the back side of the fabric, and even in something like this, let's just do one. I'm sure I will stumble a bit, but let's just try one here. We're gonna make an applique right out of our, make a house, it'll be easy for me. But we're gonna make an applique real quick out of our homes, and so the first step is I need to get all of the fabrics that I wanna use in the postcard and even the background layer I like to do, but you don't need to do your very background layer because you'll stitch it to the next uh, filler, which is the Timtex, which we're gonna talk about. But let's just first do this one step at a time. I know I'm jumping all about, like I said, I've tried to do these in a fun, not too bouncy format, but try to keep the live feel of the show going. Okay, so what I wanna do is I never want the glue to touch my ironing board. So I'm gonna need to make a square of my fusible web that is smaller than the fabric at hand. So I'm gonna grab myself a quick pair of scissors and I'm just gonna cut here. I'm eyeballing it right now because I wasn't even planning to do this until I said I was gonna. And now I've started and you're watching me and I can't stop. <laughs> so reminder, shiny, that is the glue. I'm gonna put it over the top of these houses right here and I'm cheating a little closer because there's a little snowman I want. Now for the Heat and Bond Feather Light, it is such a light glue, which is really beneficial in the machine quilting. I don't want to iron it too long and I want to use a dry iron. So I've got the iron, I'm gonna go about two to three seconds in a slow gliding format, making sure that is ironed down nicely. Then I'm gonna let this cool for just a few moments before I approach it with my scissors, or maybe you have my um, shark rotary cutter, the little 14 millimeter rotary cutter. So you could put this on a cutting mat. And if, if one of the things I do, and I do this all the time, is I wanna trim now off the fusible portions of my fabric. This fabric stays in my stash. Anything that has got fuse on it goes in a different pile because I don't, sorry Jane, I don't ever want to, um, accidentally iron again and have that paper fall off. So I keep my fabrics segregated once they've been fused. So I'm just gonna take off that little section. We'll set that aside over there for a little bit. And then I'm gonna trim this down. And at this point, and I even recorded the making of the other little postcards so that I wouldn't have to make it. This will be the benefits of the pre-recorded stuff. So I have a bunch of different, what we call B-roll of me cutting out the little pieces of the car and the house and the snowman and the presents and everything to make the postcard. I'll show you a couple quick techniques because I do have the time for that right now. So the first of all, with my rotary cutter, the 14 millimeter shark, hold it like a pen. And if I wanna use this little pink house and maybe part of this, this red house and I'm just gonna cut along the line and I'm gonna follow it around as I need. But most of this detail work here in this little fabric from Michael Miller is almost too detailed to be worrying about with the shark cutter. So most of us will prefer to just use a small little pair of like a two to four inch bladed applique scissor. And in that situation, then you would do the same thing. You're just gonna cut along the lines, 
cut along the lines. So when I was making my postcard here, I cut around the lines of the houses. I have a snowman down there. I cut around one of the cars with the tree because I love that little scene, like I said. Okay, so you basically just go ahead and get content that is removed independently or individually so you can do what you want, put it as you like. The next supply I wanna talk about that's inside the postcard that you didn't see yet is a product called Timtex. Uh, there's a couple of other brands and names out there, but basically it's a super stiff interfacing. It's about a quarter, almost well, eight, between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. So it can be easily needled through, easily machine quilted through, but it's gonna give you the rigidity of that postcard. So you can actually ship these or send these through the mail with enough postage. So for something like this, of course, the postcards are generally made, at least the ones we do for the sister show, they're all to be the same size, so they're four inches by six inches. Because I'm gonna machine quilt this, what I often like to do is make about a four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and then trim down an eighth off of each side. If you wanna do an extra half, it won't hurt, but do account for that in the detail of the design. So today, let's do a four and a half. So I'm gonna cut four and a half this way, and you can see even though it's a stiff interfacing, the, the rotary cutters and the needles go right through it so easily. So that was four and a half that way. Now I'm gonna go six and a half this way, uh, just using the lines to keep it nice and crisp, nice and square. So then all of the other fabrics I work with will be cut to and built off of this size piece, that four and a half by six and a half. So like I did for the first postcard, we can use a little bit of the stripe Another trick you might even want to do to make sure you have enough. Especially on the background. Oh, I just put the rotary cutter down thinking I was done with it, which I'm not. And I've got a bunch of stuff under my feet, which I'm also tripping over, which makes it great. So you could also just rough cut, you know, like for some reason, if you'd also lost your ruler when you lost your rotary cutter, but only found one and not the other, I don't know how that works. Here, why don't you hold that over there? Too? At any rate, so you need your background. You don't want this to show up, but on the, did I just throw the postcard? No. <laughs> on the back of the postcard, a little hard to tell right now, but I did just put a piece of our awesome linen colored uh, marble fabric, just so that it's got a solid piece of fabric on the back after all the machine quilting was done. So that was pretty cool. So then what you could end up doing is you take this, like this, back to, the fusible web, the paper is still on the back of our cute little house. So in a situation like that, you wanna peel at it. Let me give you a tip. Let's pretend like you didn't get a good bond or you were having a hard time tearing this off. There's so many things I wanna teach you. You know what? You'll all have to come back very soon for another video. There's no way I can teach you everything about sewing and quilting in just this one video, even if it's a 30 minute lunchtime video. So anyways, I'm gonna take my little pin and you can do like a straight line like a score across there, and then it'll fold. That's a really good trick in case the fusible was not coming off real easy. And when I say coming off real easy, I can see there's a shine. I don't know if you can, but there's some shine on the fabric there. That means the glue is bonded beautifully to the cloth and not to the paper anymore. So I peel this off, I bring it over, I lay it down, and I make sure, like there's that rigid edge of the Timtex, there's the rigid edge of the, edge of the Timtex. And then once I get everything just the way I want it, that's when I come back in with my hot dry iron. Now earlier you saw me sliding the iron, but in this kind of a process, I would simply want to push down and back up. You don't want to slide the iron because you might accidentally fold an applique over and it will go missing or be stuck to the bottom of the iron and start smoking and cause the fire department to show up and it just won't be a good thing. So at any rate, cautiously, but again, just for two seconds, you want to get that bond. If you over bond your fusible webs, what happens is then the bond doesn't hold, the glue has been cooked, and parts of it may start to fall off, which isn't a real problem because when you're done with it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna immediately go over to your sewing machine, set it up for free motion machine stitching, and free motion machine quilt all of your little applique pieces, like you can see that I've done here. Now, it's gonna be pretty delicate little work. It doesn't have to be beautiful and just do your best, go around the edges, try to anchor down the outside edge of all of the pieces that are independent so they don't fall off over time. And you're basically all set. 
Once all the machine's quilting is done, like I said, on the back side, I've put a natural piece of fabric to cover up all the stitching, all the bobbin work and all that kind of stuff. And so at this point, the postcard technically could be signed and you could put a stamp on this. For the, it does take a little more postage, beware, it takes a little more postage. And you can sh ship it off in the mail to your buddy, reminding them, hey, it's July and Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> I shouldn't even say that stuff. However, one of the things you're going to find, and the postman may also find it, or postwoman, I don't want to be uh, chauvinistic there, um, the edges will continue to unravel or fray. So there's several ways you can finish the edges of your postcard, and I will encourage you to finish it if you're going to mail it. If you're going to put it in a frame, you are done right now. But if you're going to put it in the mail, one of the things, if you have a serger, you could just run a nice little surged edge around the outside and at that point I would have done it right before use the surging and the trimming at the same that'll bind the edge and it's just beautiful the other thing you could do is you could satin stitch so you put your regular zigzag foot on and zig in the postcard and zag just on the edge and a lot of machines require a specialty foot for that and it's kind of different so I didn't want to dive into that approach and like I said at the beginning of today's video I had this crazy ridiculous idea so we're going to try it and I might not even finish we'll see if it looks like it's going to work I'll keep going with it if it doesn't look like it's going to work we'll bail out I'll sharpen my seam ripper but we will still call the the winning prize we'll talk about all that stuff so either way Let's see how this idea works. What I want to do is I want to bind this little project as if it were a quilt, but I don't really want to work all that hard and I don't want that much bulk. So I did not make a two and a half inch wide binding like I normally would, but I made a one inch binding and I'm already second guessing that philosophy. <laughs> What I did though, is I tried to roll over one of these edges by about a quarter of an inch and I pressed it. That'll be the last edge I stitch. I'm basically pre-setting the final turned edge. I'm hoping this is a good idea. And I'm hoping this will allow me to get away with just one inch instead of the um, two and a half inches. The next thing I'm gonna try to do now is I wanna think right sides together and I wanna start on the back of the postcard so that my final stitching is from the front of the postcard through the back of the postcard, like I did in my binding video that just came out a few days ago as well. Check it out if you have not already seen it. And to all of those who recommend I check out the new binding magic video or something that is out there, I have yet to check it out, but I have three or four of you that told me I would love it. So it is definitely on my to-do list. And this is why we love making it fun because we are a community here and we are all working beautifully together to encourage each other. And while I say that, what was going through my mind? You saw me flipping this thing around. I was doing design while talking about something completely different. I have a red binding. I don't want you to see where I start. So I'm gonna start somewhere down here along the house in the red. I'm hoping that works. I'm gonna leave a little bit of an extra tail and I'm gonna come right in over here to my sewing machine. And I've got a quarter inch and an edge guide set up, but I'm actually gonna use the edge of the foot, which is more of about an eighth. And I'm just gonna set a couple stitches. But I am gonna to try to put this on with a mitered corner. And all of a sudden I'm starting to think that's not gonna even work the way I'm doing this, but maybe it will, we'll find out. So with a mitered corner, I would stop here, back stitch. I would pull this out. I would roll this up. I would put this down. I am not going to try to also miter these edges together. I'm just gonna tuck this edge over and hopefully sew right through it. So the first edge has been now folded over. So when it comes together, it will hopefully be a finished no raw edge. And then this other piece here, I'm starting to sew. I will sew all the way through quite a ways. Stopping there. Now, if all went well, I should go ahead and trim this here. We'll see. 
Are you as nervous as I am? Look how sweaty I just got. I have no idea if this is gonna work and I think I'm teaching it. What a dork. Anyways, I've got now that little folded edge in there. I think I'm gonna be able to, this is gonna work. I know this is gonna work. This is rad. Okay, so what I wanna do though is I'm worried about that beginning spot. So let's start close to the beginning spot. I'm gonna roll this edge under, under, just enough. Okay, so I'm kind of pulling that over like that. I don't want to lose too many of the wheels on my tire, my car there. And I had intentionally thought of using the white thread on the top. Now I'm going to move this edge over. And before I even get rolling, I can already tell there's something I really want, which is going to be my stiletto. So let's make sure I have that handy. Get a couple stitches going. And now I'm just very carefully watching to make sure that that needle is lining up along this edge as I go. So I'm pulling the finished edge over. This was that final beginning edge taking a little encouragement Oop. and it doesn't look beautiful but it does work I'm going to come out to this edge fold it pinch it just like I did in the binding video but it's just all super small so if you've never done this technique before definitely do it big first and I can go around there Oh my goodness, that is awesome. It actually worked even better than I expected. And then you've got your little binding there on the back and everything, and now the postman or woman will not destroy your beautiful postcard as you send it through the mail. If you're looking carefully, of course, I've got some threads I need to trim up and that kind of stuff. And no, it wasn't a perfect job the first time. But wow, I had an idea right as I was starting to film and it worked. So a quick reminder though, on this binding, I cut it at one inch. If you're brand new to this, maybe even cut it one and a quarter. Give yourself a little extra wiggle room. It doesn't have to be so small. And I believe you could spend, send even a larger postcard through the mail. It doesn't have to be four inches by six inches. Those are just my requirements. When I was making the awesome postcards for the Wendy's Wish Foundation that we did at Sisters, and again, this is why so many of us come to quilting. You've heard me say it a million times, but you know, sewing and quilting and crafting is really so good for the hands and the heart and the soul, but it feels so wonderful to make stuff and give stuff away. As a matter of fact, it feels so good that I have just finished making something. Now I need to give something away again. And I think that this Hello My Dear Fabric would be the perfect choice, but I've done this two weeks in a row and I've forgotten it, so I wanna spend a real quick moment and tell you the story of last week's winner, because I can. So, Joy Dixon from Alberta, Canada won last week's prize, and because it's taken me this long to take care of it, <laughs> I still have last week's prize right here, which is a bloom. That's the fabric line from Tamara Kate, and we also had her flower field pattern that we were giving away. Now, like I said, she won the prize, Joy that is, won the prize while I was in Sisters, so I wanted to make contact with her local quilt shop before I mailed the package, because the local quilt shops don't exactly know what we're doing with all of this program yet. So I thought it'd be really fun if I contacted the quilt shop and said, hey, I'm sending a gift to one of your customers named Joy, she picked the shop. So the thing goes like this, so I take out the phone, which is actually right here as the recording device right now, but I take it out of my pocket, <laughs> And I call up this shop that is called Woodland Quilting in Alberta, Canada. And I say, this gal says, um, hello, Woodland Quilting. This is Joy. And I'm kind of, oh, wait a second. And I said, hello, my name is Rob Appel. And she goes, I know that name. And I said, well, I think I know this name. And so comes to find out Joy works part time at Woodland Quilting. And that's why, of course, it's her favorite quilt shop, which I thought was terrific. So she now knows that the package will be sent to the quilt shop she works at. She's waiting for it. She's hopefully watching this and says, 
oh my gosh, he promised he would ship it out. Remember, Joy, this is recorded. I just got off the phone with you. Package is going in the mail today. People won't see this until it's halfway to Canada. So yes, you can win. The only regulations now is if you're on the International Space Station, the prize comes with a free ride for Rob up to the space station to hand deliver, and I'll even offer one hour of free sewing education on the International Space Station if I have to bring my little featherweight to make the trip possible. So, Joy Dixon, congratulations. Thank you for following along this week. This is how we do it. Let's get into it right now. I'll be sending hello, my dear, to a local quilt shop of the winner's choice. Now that it's a pre-recorded video, this makes life so much easier. Simply comment on this video, just down below in this video, the answer to the mystery question. Now I'm going to read the mystery question here in a second and as a reminder you must be subscribed to Making It Fun with Rob Appel to win. So those are the two qualifications is subscribe to the channel, comment on this specific video with the answer to today's mystery question. If you are just new to Making It Fun, the mystery box of questions started when I was doing interviews at International Quilt Market in Kansas City. Believe it or not, my team at Michael Miller, they're kind of new to me. They were afraid I might run out of things to say. Are you kidding me? I can talk all day long. So they made up a box of mystery questions and they've been incredibly entertaining. So at the end of every video that we're giving a prize away, we're gonna end with the mystery box of questions. None of this is pre-posed, none of this is loaded. So you see, I'm making eye contact right here, except for I have all Susan's business cards in here. Okay, here they are. They're on the table. We're mixing them around. We're doing our thing, doing our stuff. Okay, looking at you and picking a card. Here it is. Question. Oh, this is a fun one, and I think we might have done this question before already in an early video. But nonetheless, today's question is, please answer it in the comments below to win the prize. I will pick the winner of this prize on the Friday following the Wednesday video, and I don't even know what that date is. I'm sorry. I could figure it out. I think it'll be the 26th, but don't quote me on that. You want to hear the question. Question is, if you have a button, which when you press it, it does something. What does your, meaning button, do and why? So what is your magic button? When you press that magic button, what will that, what will that magic button do other than turn off this video? And then put that comment below. I will draw the name in a few days, give everybody a couple of days to participate, watch the video, get their comments in. And again, that's what it's all about. It's all just about making it fun, having a blast playing with Michael Miller fabrics, supporting the local quilt shops out there. Make sure you visit a quilt shop this week. Please run in, give the owner a hug. Thank them for being in your community, providing a wonderful source of inspiration and education and entertainment and all of that. As a matter of fact, when you're done giving them a hug for you, give them a hug for me. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.